So we're going to interrupt our normal 20 series coverage, or everybody's normal 20 series coverage. As you can see right here, we've got the Gaming X Trio on the test bench. I don't know if you can see it. Reese is doing weird things. Yeah, I'm holding this in a weird way, Reese. This is not how the video is supposed to start. For an examination on something that Tank and I were discussing, I got this Galax 1060 uh, as soon as the 1060 is launched, and Tank got his 1060 shortly after, but He's one of those filthy miners that you've been hearing about, whereas this one's only been used for gaming benchmarks and also looking, I would say pretty, but not really on a shelf. Uh, so Tank, how, how long have you had this? Almost two years? Yeah, just about two Okay, years. and you've been using it for mining nearly nonstop? Yeah. Like even when you're at the office, this thing's mining at home? Yes. Even though it's not profitable at all? Yes. Okay, so Tank is the guy who, it's just mining. Like we talk about nobody should be mining in this climate. Mm. Why are you mining in this climate? Free electricity. He has free electricity. That's exactly why. So this thing was dirty prior to uh, t Reese cleaning it so that he could get clean B-roll shots of it. There's still some mm. dust underneath. This was a gross card, yes? It's still a little gross. It's still a little gross. Yeah. So the whole point is that we're testing these two cards. They've both been around for about two years. They've both existed in the ecosystem. Uh, and so we wanted to find out, is there any performance degradation? Is there any cooling degradation? Is there anything from you mining 24 seven for the past two years, <laughs> except for when you're not playing PUBG at night? That's like, fair. is there any effect on the graphics card? And is this card still worth buying? Because now that the 20 series is coming out, there's gonna be a closer examination of cards that have been mined with. Mm. Obviously, these, these aren't the same cards, so it's not a direct one-to-one -one comparison, but we did our best to lock them down to the same clock speed to see if that affected performance at all. And spoiler alert, let's get into it. Yeah, so do you have anything to say about your mining ways? Uh, do you want to apologize to the people? No, why? You're a filthy miner. I bought it for gaming and then started to mine. You're disgusting. <laughs> get out of the chair tank. <sighs> not the chair. I'm gonna sit at the bark station. So both cards, two years old, one Gaming X, one Galaxy XOC, both have been reviewed on the channel, by the way. We reviewed a Gaming X 1060, it wasn't tanks, but we, we did it. Anyways, let's, uh, let's just jump into the actual benchmarks and the understanding of how these cards perform. So the understanding and the reason why we're even testing this is because people seem to think that mining will wear out your card's performance, it will wear on your card to make sure that it performs worse because it's been running at 100% load for way longer than any normal card is meant to be. This card hasn't been gained on as much as a normal gaming card would for over two years because we've had other graphics cards come into the office and we tend to use the more powerful ones rather than a 1060. But the notion is there that we should potentially see some performance degradation because of its excessive use. We're gonna look into that with the actual benchmark numbers. Tank's first note here is, don't buy graphics cards that were used for mining. Reee! So that's perfect. So it's something that we've heard a lot. Let's, let's, let's jump into it. We tested all the games at 1080p. It's okay, you're selling it, right? <laughs> okay, so we tested all of the games at 1080p, high preset. Both cards were left at bone stock no overclocking or fan tweaks, everything was left normally as is, and they were left to perform exactly how their manufacturers intended them to, except for this Galax, which was made to look a little uglier. So that's, that's exactly what we went into. Okay, so in 10 of the 14 games that we benchmarked, the Mining 1060, this Gaming X, came out on top, thanks to its actual 24 megahertz boost clock that pushed it over what the 1060 normally operated at. This card worked at 1974 megahertz, this one worked at 1950. So GPU boost still working perfectly well on this card. So the card in and of itself, compared to the way the card performed previously, is exactly about the same. The 1060 EXOC, again, also about the same. A 1950 megahertz boost clock is what we were expecting out of it, which led to the Mining X card winning in most of the tests. Obviously, it's not winning to the extent that it absolutely trounces the other 1060. It's within the margin of error, but it was clear and definitive that the mining card was a little bit faster. However, once we dropped the clock speeds down to exactly the same, 1950 on both of them, they performed exactly identical. So in the few games that we did test with the 1950 on each, they were literally within one to two FPS of each other. So 
no performance degradation whatsoever on this 1060 either. And neither card had trouble keeping cool. So that's one of the arguments that you'll hear as well with mining cards is that the fans are gonna wear out, they're not gonna work as well, they're gonna have to be pushed higher in order for them to maintain the same speeds because the fans are also degrading. At least with this Gaming X, we were hitting average fan speeds of around 34%, 35%. Sometimes it would peak higher, we hit a max fan speed of around 84, but on average during gaming, it was about 34, 35% of fan speed with the clock, the, the core clock, the core temperature never really going above 65 degrees. So it's still able to keep cool really well. Tank, you don't have this in anything besides like a normal case. Do you keep it in a case? So it's in a case and side panels on. So it's actually like breathing its own heat. You don't have it on an open mining rig whatsoever. It's in a gaming system. You're still running it in its enclosed system. It just has a better intake because you opened it up. Okay, that makes sense. So this one averaged about 60% fan speed, but obviously you can see the difference in the fans. This one has to work harder in order to get the same temperatures, but the temperatures were nearly identical coming in at around like 65 to 70 when it was in gaming mode. 73 was the peak temperature that we really saw. But again, this is a worse cooler. These are worse fans. It's a worse design, so that's to be expected. So as we can see in this direct comparison of cards that have been used for two years, they've been out on the market for quite some time, there's nearly no difference between Tank's Mining 1060 and this hideous 1060 that we painted ourselves. They're roughly about the same when all things are considered equal. And that's one of the myths I think that we wanna dispel. This, the whole purpose behind this video so that you can have confidence as a buyer that you're gonna be buying a, a graphics card that will actually work even if it has been used for mining previously. Obviously, Tank's fans have been spinning for quite a considerable amount of time more than the Galaxy 1060, so it's likely that they will wear out sooner than the Galax would. But at the same time, when you have a company like MSI putting high quality components into their fans, it's less likely that it's going to happen imminently and definitely within the warranty period. But also out of all of the things that could potentially go wrong, replacing a fan is super simple, barely an inconvenience. You unscrew a, thing, a few things, you pop out the connector, you pop the connector back in, and then you're off to the races with the new fan if you can pick them up from MSI directly. But that really brings me to the point of like, making sure that you're finding somebody who actually knows what they're doing with mining because as Tank mentioned to me just earlier, like the whole point behind mining isn't to push it to its max. You don't have it set to its max overclock. You actually undervolt these things. You underclock them to find the best efficiency for what you're doing so that you can optimize your hash per watt. When you have somebody who is mining on a whole bunch of graphics cards and is actually optimizing them, they're gonna run far less than they would at 100% GPU usage if they were in a gaming scenario. The memory is usually overclocked a bit, but then the core clock is dead definitely down clock to make sure that it's not running at super fast mega 2.2 gigahertz all of the freaking time. It's actually more closer to like 16, 1700 megahertz, which is considerably lower than the 1950 that you would see in a gaming scenario, which means the fans don't actually have to work as hard as they would if they're gaming. They won't get worn out as much. That's good to know. So out of all of this, the thing that I came away confident in is that these two cards are nearly identical in age and they perform about the same. I, as Brett from UFD Tech, would be totally comfortable buying Tank's 1060, which, cheeky little plug, he's selling it so he can buy a 1080i. So if you're in South Africa and you wanna buy Tank's personal 1060, you're gonna be putting this on Carbonite. It doesn't help the channel at all, but uh, selling Tank's 1060 will work. I would be confident in buying mining cards, especially from somebody who's clearly understanding what the mining implications are. If you're contacting a used buyer and they can tell you, hey, I use this frequency with this voltage and ran it like this, those are the best kind of mining cards that I think you could probably get. Finding somebody who is like, I use this for mining and then they don't understand or they can't even tell you what settings they were running at, I would stay away from those people because they were probably like maxing the overclock if they even know how to do that. So bad move there, don't buy from those kinds of people. But overall, the video is here to just serve that uh, 1060 versus 1060, two years after use, 
buying a mining card, totally okay in my book. But what do you all think? Have you purchased a mining card recently, especially since the 20 series has dropped? Are you finding them working out okay? Obviously, there's duds even if they haven't been used for mining. The fans go, the GPU just dies, but it's not from an actual slowdown of performance. They usually just like catastrophically fail rather than like slowly dip below a per acceptable performance level. Let's hear from you down in the comments. Let me know what you think. I think that's it. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you guys for watching this video. Love you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Love you too.